What the heck is up guys, it's Jacob here, and today we're going to make an Arduino controlled um, garage door opener. So we're going to be able to open up our garage door through a web browser, pushing a button. We're going to be able to open and close the garage door, and if you wanted, you could even add sensors to verify that the garage door is open or closed. Um, so this is a great um, example of home automation or of like interfacing, um, you know, computers and electrical with like, you know, actual... Uh, real application, real use applications, because you know the little fob thing that you have that reaches like 20 feet. Well, wouldn't it be awesome if you could open up your your um just click an app on your iPhone and it just opens up uh, your garage door from anywhere? That'd be awesome. Or you could look on there and see if your garage door is open or closed. Now that's pretty cool. Um, how about doing other things like you could control the temperature of your room, your air conditioner in your room. Um, if you have a little uh air conditioner like myself, a little 5000 BTU, you could um, set the temperature from your phone using an Arduino through a web browser. So it's a very, very powerful application. Um, a little bit of code, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you can work on some magic. So um, we're using our background of electronics uh, knowledge and as well as uh, programming knowledge to interface a microcontroller, and this is the heart of it, to um, produce a, a web page that we can access it's acting as a little web server, and it has an Ethernet, an Ethernet controller and everything. So it's connecting to the Internet. We port forward it. It's acting just like a little normal web server. We push a button, and that interfaces with the microcontroller itself. It puts an output signal, and that in turn opens up the garage door as if you were pushing the button right there yourself. So how do we do this? It sounds pretty complex. It sounds like a bunch of pseudo magic, but it's not. So. Um, let me just kind of go ahead and explain, see if I could draw this out for you. So, um, if we have, um, I know in my garage door opener, a lot of you guys have this uh, button, so let's draw this out. So normally you have your, your two wires, um, and these go up to your garage door opener, let's just call these guys the wires, alright? And then it goes to this, this button, or this switch, we'll call it a switch. And it's basically like this. So we draw it as a switch like that. And then when you push it, the wires connect and you make a circuit. And uh, these wires connect. And that button pops back out instantly and that breaks the circuit. Let's draw that. So now you have an unconnected circuit. So basically, you're connecting the wires just for a small amount of time. Let's just say half a second. Um, so 500 milliseconds, maybe even less. Um, and that button is just making quick contact, touching those wires, and it gets that signal and opens up your garage door opener. So that's how it works manually when you go and push your button, okay? So we need to basically make it so that we can do this through a web browser so that we can have the Arduino simulate this action here. We need it to connect these two wires for um, uh, half a second. Now, some people come up with some ridiculous ways of doing this. I've seen this on YouTube. And um, people will uh, actually go through the trouble of creating a whole physical mechanism to have a servo go and push the button. And they'll have people will use um, sometimes uh, relays to connect it. That's a little bit smarter way. But because people are, they know a little bit about like programming the microcontroller and stuff, but they don't have a good background on electronics, not to like bag on them or anything. But that's not the most efficient way to do it. Let's draw out uh, an actual just simple circuit that can uh, make this work. So um, let's start over again. We have our two wires. Um, now, typically when you measure these, um, you have a, a, a positive and a negative. So we have a positive and a negative here. And um, I know on mine it's about plus 24 volts. So this is 24 volts and this is ground. This is zero over here. Um, this probably looks like crap, by the way, guys. I'm sorry if it does. Um, I'm doing this, like, all in the midair, backwards, looking at the screen. So it's probably going to look like crap, not going to lie. Um, so let's create a simple way to, um, to put this together. So what is, you know, what can you use in place of, of a relay? See, what you want to do is connect these two wires together. But we're talking DC power here. This isn't AC. It's not anything complex to deal with. So we're using a DC circuit to connect these two wires. The easiest way to do that is a transistor. It's solid state. It's not going to wear out. It draws virtually no power and it can get the job done quick and easy. 
but a lot of people don't know how to design circuits, so they just end up throwing a relay in there. So, with a transistor, we have a few pins, so let's go ahead and um, draw this out. So, basically, uh, if I draw out a transistor, we have, um, let me just draw it out. It's going to look like this, and it's going to look like this. I haven't drawn out the schematic in I don't know how long because I've been I'm very rusty on my electronics crap. I'm not gonna lie. I um I've been doing computers for way too long and I haven't touched electronics. I haven't touched a MOSFET in like a year now. So it's been that long. So I'm sorry if I get this a little bit backwards, but it should be generally right. And we will I will confirm it in the next part of this um, segment just to make sure I'm right but anyways let's say gate and then drain I want to say this is the drain and this is a source so I know for sure this is the gate I these might be mixed up in this video I'm so sorry if they are but um because like I said I haven't touched MOSFETs and dealt with electronics in forever so let's just erase this zero because it's kind of looking confusing in the picture right now but basically this looks like some pseudo Chinese character right now that no one even knows. You know, you're looking at this and you're going, what the hell is that? You know, the switch made a lot more sense, but now we're coming up with this device, this MOSFET. So, basically, this is the same thing as a switch. It's doing the same exact thing as a switch. So what we're going to do is on the source, we're actually going to go ahead and connect it to our ground. So let's take this and let's connect it to here. So remember, this is the zero volt line on our on our garage door opener. This is the minus, and this is zero volts. Zero volts. So, and this is plus twenty four volts. So, um, there's not a large amount of current going through these wires. We already know that because when you push the button, you're you're making um, a, what do you call it? Uh, you know, you're already making a connection in the circuit it's zero ohms I mean you may want to look at your button a little close just to make there make sure there isn't a resistor in series with it if there is you're also going to want a resistor in series with this but in my case there's no resistor in series we could add just a 10 ohm or 100 ohm resistor in there just to play it safe if you if you feel that your transistor may have a little bit of current flowing through it so let's go ahead and erase this real quick and I'm just going to re rewrite this up here so this is plus 24 volts like that just to kind of get it out of the way so now this plus 24 volt line is gonna um, this uh, MOSFET is gonna allow um, current to flow through this direction when we turn it on and that's gonna allow it to pretty much make the connection just like we would if we push the button so um, in this case we'll add a resistor in there just to play it safe like I said because we don't know really how much current is flowing through this thing I would uh, I would imagine not that much, but we'll just add a say a, a 10 ohm resistor, and we'll connect it to our MOSFET drain. So now um, let's just label this as 10 ohms. So now we have a 10 ohm resistor. Um, here's our 24 volt, zero volt. So our zero volt goes into the source. The drain goes over to our through our 10 ohm resistor into our 24 volt line. This is the positive part of the switch. And our switch will normally be right here again. And so basically what this is doing, this is taking the place of the switch. So now this will uh, connect these wires just as if the switch did. So how do we connect these wires? How does this do the same thing as a switch? And basically, this gate this gate line here is going to connect to our Arduino. And our, 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 our Arduino is going to control this transistor. So if we take this gate line and we bring it up to 5 volts so I'm just gonna make a little wire jumper right here just so you guys know that means it's not attached that little hump there that means it's not these wires are not attached so this has nothing this gate line is just going right over here and it's going straight to our Arduino let's add a little resistor in there just to make it um, safe so we're gonna also add a pull down resistor so let me explain how this works so let's just say this is um, pin, uh, no, let's not do that yet, sorry. So I'm basically going to draw two resistors. I'm going to draw a resistor here, and then I'm going to draw another resistor here, and this is going to go to ground. So we have 
uh, this going to our gate on our transistor and it's going to go to ground and let's just make this a 10k so this is a 10k resistor and then we're going to have a resistor going to one of the pins on our Arduino let's just say pin 5 so this is going to pin 5 on our Arduino and this is a 1k so we have a 10k going to ground and we have a 1k going to pin 5 on our Arduino so now what do we have and by the way this ground has to be refer referenced it has to be tied to the ground on your Arduino to make this work so now if we run through this whole thing when pin 5 has a 5 volt is applied when you turn pin 5 on it's gonna drag this gate voltage up it's gonna go up and it's gonna complete the connection just as if you were pushing that button okay and then when you um, when the Arduino turns off and that 5 volts turns off, this 10K will pull it back down to ground, it'll make it 0 volts, and it'll turn the circuit off. The circuit, the transistor will turn it off. So this is basically a way of interfacing this little 5 volts, this Arduino, this small, small signal with a transistor to work with this 24 volt system here, this garage door opener button. So now, if we apply 5 volts, for the same amount of uh, time as we push the button, 500 milliseconds, I say that's a little high, honestly. Probably closer to 200, 300 milliseconds. And when we push that button, uh, it's gonna, you know, make the wires connect. So if we apply the five volts for the same amount of time, three, um, 300 milliseconds or so, it's gonna turn this transistor on and it's gonna allow current to flow just as if you push the button. So now we are, simulating the button pushing with a 5 volt signal from our Arduino. So this is how we use the electronics to interface it. A little bit more complex than um, using a, a relay. A relay is an easy way out of it. Um, especially the little shields that you can buy because a, a shield you can't even control a relay directly with an Arduino. You actually have to have this circuit to control a relay because an Arduino isn't powerful enough to control a relay. You actually have to have a transistor to turn on your relay. A lot of people don't realize that, but the uh, shields that you buy from Arduino are going to have a transistor built in them anyways. So um, this is the, the simplest way to do it. Um, there are people, like I said, that will actually go through the trouble of making an entire mechanism to and write a program to have a, a servo come and push the button physically just because they don't know how to design this whole thing right here. It's not that hard to design. It doesn't take any rocket science. These are all just numbers I kind of made up in my head that I kind of can make up and they, I guarantee you these would work just because I have experience doing this and I've done this for so many years. I mean, you can't just make up any random numbers, but you know, these numbers would work in a realistic situation. They may not be 100% efficient, but they will work 100% of the time. Um, like the 10K has to be in this way, you know, you couldn't like flip these because then if your ground resistor was more powerful than your 5 volt resistor, it would always be pulling it down and stuff like that. So you do have to know where to place these stuff, the, these resistors and stuff, but this will work. This is a working schematic. So we'll go ahead and actually build this up and then we'll go ahead and actually um, write a little program for it. I'll show you guys the program here and then we'll interface it with our Arduino and hook it up to our garage door opener and show you this schematic at work.